Hey there, I'm Bella. Before I dive into my story, hit that like and subscribe button. Ready? Here we go. Growing up, my world was a cramped, dimly lit room in a rundown part of town. Our house, a decaying structure, barely shielded us from the harshness of the world outside. My parents, doing their best with what little they had, often looked weary, their faces etched with the struggle of making ends meet. Bella, dinner's ready, Mom would call out, her voice weary yet warm. Dinner was often whatever leftovers we could scrape together. I remember sitting at our wobbly kitchen table, picking at a plate of day-old bread and watery soup. Why can't we have pizza like the other kids? I once asked, my young voice filled with a mix of curiosity and envy. We make do with what we have, Bella. This is our pizza, Mom replied, trying to paint a smile on a stark reality. Clothes were a luxury, often handed down or donated. The first time I got a dress that was almost new, I twirled around in it, feeling like a princess, despite its loose fit. Bella, you look beautiful, Dad said, his eyes softening for a moment, pushing aside the harshness of his daily toils. School was a different battlefield. My mismatched, often ill-fitting clothes were a constant source of teasing. Why do you always wear weird clothes, Bella? Kids would jeer. I'd bite back tears, retreating into my shell vowing silently that one day, things would be different. At home, I'd find solace in books, the public library becoming my sanctuary. I'd lose myself in stories of far-off places and people who overcame great odds. It was there I made a promise to myself. I would not let this be my forever. Mom, Dad, I'm going to college, I declared one evening, surprising even myself with the firmness of my voice. College? But Bella, we can't afford that. Mom said, worry creasing her forehead. I'll find a way. Scholarships, jobs, whatever it takes, I replied, my determination unwavering. The journey through college was a relentless marathon of studying, working part-time jobs, and scraping by on the bare minimum. It was exhausting, but with each passing day, I felt a step closer to changing my stars. Bella, how do you do it? My roommate once asked, marveling at my late-night study sessions. It's either this or back to a life I refuse to live, I said, my eyes fixed on the textbook sprawled in front of me. Finally, graduation day arrived. I stood there in my cap and gown, a symbol of triumph over the adversities of my past. But the real victory came shortly after landing a decent job. It wasn't glamorous, but it was a start, a gateway to a new life. With my first few paychecks, I moved out of the cramped dorm room into a small but cozy apartment. It was mine, my haven, a far cry from the dilapidated walls of my childhood. Then came the day I decided to bring my parents into my new world. Mom, Dad, I want you to move in with me, I offered during a rare visit to their still-struggling household. Their eyes widened, disbelief etched across their faces. But your place, it's your space, Bella, Dad objected, his pride wrestling with the reality of their hardships. I want to share it with you. You've given me everything, now let me give back. I insisted, my heart swelling with a mix of love and resolve. The day they moved in was surreal. Watching them settle into a home without leaks or drafts, seeing them relax in a way I hadn't seen in years, was a feeling I can't quite describe. Is this really all yours, Bella? Mom asked, her eyes scanning the modest living room. It's ours, Mom. I corrected her gently, a smile spreading across my face. Life with them in my apartment was a balancing act of caring for them and managing my new responsibilities at work. But it was a balance I embraced wholeheartedly. For the first time, we were not just surviving. We were living, and it was just the beginning of something new, something better. Life with my parents in my modest apartment was a pleasant routine, until one day, a call from Max, my older brother, broke the calm. Bella, guess what? I landed a job at Carter and Goldstein. Max's voice was brimming with excitement. That's amazing, Max, I replied, genuinely happy for him. Carter and Goldstein was a top firm, the kind of place Max had always dreamed of. And that's not all, he continued. I've rented an apartment downtown. It's incredible, Bella. You've got to see it. His enthusiasm was contagious. I was proud of him, but a part of me felt a twinge of envy. His success seemed so effortless compared to my struggles. A few weeks later... Max invited us over to his new place. As we stepped into his apartment, my parents' eyes lit up like kids in a candy store. 
The place was everything mine wasn't. Spacious, modern, with a breathtaking view of the city skyline. Wow, Max, this place is something else, Dad exclaimed, his eyes scanning the luxurious decor. Mom was equally awestruck. I never imagined one of my children living in a place like this, she said, her voice filled with a mix of pride and something else I couldn't quite place. We spent the evening there, Mom and Dad hanging onto Max's every word as he talked about his new job and the perks that came with it. It wasn't until a few days later that I sensed something was off. Mom and Dad were unusually quiet, and their usual cheerfulness around my apartment had faded. Then, one evening, I came home to find their room empty. Their belongings, their clothes, even the little knickknacks Mom loved so much, all gone. Confused and worried, I called Max. Bella, they wanted to stay with me for a while, he said, his voice casual, as if it were the most normal thing in the world. I couldn't believe it. They had left, just like that, without a word. I felt a mix of anger and betrayal boiling inside me. I needed answers. The next day, I went to Max's apartment. I found Mom in the kitchen, cooking something that smelled delicious. Mom, why? Why did you leave without saying anything? I asked, my voice shaking. Mom turned, her expression cold and distant. Look at this place, Bella. Look at what Max can provide. We're just trying to live a little better in our old age. Her words stung like a slap. I looked around the luxurious apartment, a stark contrast to my humble yet loving home. Is that all you care about? The comfort? The luxury? I asked, my heart aching. Bella, you've done enough for us. It's Max's turn now. Besides, your apartment, it's not exactly comfortable, Mom said, her voice trailing off. I turned to Dad, hoping for some support but he avoided my gaze. You think my place is a shithole, don't you? I blurted out, the hurt evident in my voice. Mom hesitated, then in a barely audible whisper, she said, Yes. I stood there, rooted to the spot, as the reality of their materialism and ingratitude hit me. They had chosen comfort over love, luxury over loyalty. With a heavy heart, I left Max's apartment. The walk back to my apartment was the longest I'd ever taken. Each step was heavy, not just with physical weight, but with the weight of heartbreak and betrayal. Back in my now quieter, emptier apartment, I sat on the couch, trying to process everything. My parents, the ones I'd worked so hard to provide for, had abandoned me for a taste of luxury. It was in that moment of silence and solitude that I realized something crucial. My value and worth were not defined by the size or splendor of my home, but by the strength and determination I'd shown throughout my life. Their betrayal, as painful as it was, opened my eyes to a harsh truth. Sometimes those you love can hurt you the most. I wiped away a lone tear, a symbol of both pain and awakening. This was not the end of my story, but the beginning of a new chapter, one where I would no longer be held back by the expectations and judgments of others. I was Bella, strong and independent, and this was just another challenge I would overcome. The weeks following my parents' departure were tough, but they also brought a newfound sense of independence. I focused on my work, putting in extra hours and taking on new projects. My apartment, once a symbol of familial unity, now represented my personal strength and resilience. One evening, as I was finalizing a project, my phone buzzed with a call from Max. His voice, usually full of confidence and cheer, was somber. Bella, I've got some bad news. The company, there have been some major cutbacks. I've lost my job. His words hit me like a ton of bricks. Max, the golden boy who always landed on his feet, was now facing a crisis. Are you okay, Max? I asked, my tone softening despite everything. Yeah, I'll figure something out. But I might have to move out of the apartment. It's too expensive without a job. The news of Max's misfortune spread quickly through our family. Within days, I could sense the shift in my parents' demeanor, even through brief, awkward phone calls. Bella, how have you been? Mom's voice was laced with a hint of regret. I'm doing well, Mom. Work's keeping me busy, I replied, keeping my tone neutral. That's good, that's good. Her voice trailed off, the unsaid words hanging in the air. Meanwhile, Max's situation worsened. He had to vacate his luxurious apartment and move into a modest one-bedroom rental. I offered to help him move, a gesture of goodwill despite our strained relationship. As we packed his belongings, 
the reality of his new life set in. The fancy gadgets, the expensive furniture, all had to go. Max was a shadow of his former self, his usual charisma replaced by a quiet resignation. I never thought it would come to this, he said, looking around the nearly empty apartment. Life's unpredictable, Max, but you'll bounce back, I reassured him, trying to lift his spirits. Back at my own apartment, I found solace in the little things, cooking my favorite meals, enjoying quiet evenings with a good book, and taking pride in my work achievements. My career was on an upward trajectory, and I was finally able to start saving for a future I once only dreamed of. I spent the rest of the day reflecting on the journey I had been on, from a childhood mired in poverty to a life of independence and success. It had been a road filled with obstacles, but each one had made me stronger. That evening, as I looked around my apartment, a sense of peace washed over me. It was more than just a living space. It was a testament to my resilience and determination. I had built a life on my terms, and no matter what the future held, I was ready for it. This chapter of my life, marked by betrayal and heartbreak, had taught me the true value of self-reliance and the importance of making choices that align with one's own values and not those imposed by others. Months rolled by, and my life settled into a rhythm of work, personal growth, and quiet evenings. The sting of my parents' betrayal had lessened, replaced by a sense of empowerment and self-sufficiency. I had found contentment in my independence. One rainy evening, as I was curled up with a book, my phone rang. The screen flashed, Mom and Dad. I hesitated before answering. Bella, it's your mother. We need to talk. Her voice was frail, a stark contrast to the confident, often demanding tone I remembered. Okay, Mom, what is it? We're in a bit of a situation, she began hesitantly. After Max moved into his smaller place, there wasn't enough room for us. We've been staying with a friend, but we can't impose any longer. We were wondering if... if we could come back to stay with you. Her words hung in the air, heavy with expectation. I took a deep breath, gathering my thoughts. Mom, I can't do that. I've moved on from what happened. My life is different now, I replied, my voice steady. There was a pause, a silence filled with unspoken pleas. Bella, we're your parents. We have nowhere else to go, she said, desperation seeping into her voice. Mom... I understand that, but you made your decision. I've made mine. I wish you the best, but my home is no longer an option. Ending the call, I felt a mixture of relief and sorrow. I had made the tough choice, but it was the right one for me. In the following weeks, I heard bits and pieces of my parents' situation through family friends. They were moving from place to place, unable to find a stable living situation. The tables had turned. They were now experiencing the instability they had once imposed on me. Despite the knowledge of their struggles, I continued to focus on my career and personal life. I was promoted at work, a recognition of my hard work and dedication. In my free time, I volunteered at a local shelter, finding fulfillment in helping those facing hardships similar to what I had experienced as a child. One Saturday, while volunteering, I ran into an old family friend, Mrs. Jenkins. Bella, it's been so long. You've done so well for yourself she exclaimed, her eyes twinkling with pride. Thank you, Mrs. Jenkins. How have you been? I asked, genuinely happy to see a familiar face from the past. I've been good, dear. I heard about your parents, though. It's a shame how things turned out, she said, her voice tinged with sadness. Yes, it is. But we all make our choices, and we have to live with them, I replied, my tone reflective. Mrs. Jenkins nodded, understanding the unspoken depth of my words. As I walked home that day, I thought about how far I had come, from a child in a poverty-stricken home to a successful, independent woman making a difference in the world. The journey hadn't been easy, but it had shaped me into who I was. That evening, as I sat in my living room, the setting sun casting a warm glow across the room, I felt a deep sense of peace. I had overcome the obstacles of my past and built a life on my terms. My parents' choices had led them down their path, and I had chosen mine. In that moment, I realized that true justice wasn't about revenge or seeing others suffer for their choices. It was about finding the strength to rise above the challenges and toxicity, to create a life of purpose and meaning. I was Bella, and my story was one of resilience, strength, and triumph over adversity.
My parents' fate was their own, but mine was a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit. And that, my friends, marks the end of Bella's journey. She stood strong, faced her challenges, and made tough choices. Now, I have a question for you. If you were in Bella's shoes, would you have made the same decision regarding her parents? Would you have allowed them to return, or refused, as she did? This is a deep and perhaps controversial topic. What defines family loyalty and personal boundaries? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your opinions and stories are what make this community so special. And hey, if you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more stories that challenge, inspire, and entertain. Thanks for watching.